what's up guys and welcome to the wrestling for life network and also welcome to the first episode of the tna review on the channel and as we continue to grow and expand and change the little things around we won't be covering tna impact live each and every week so that is why we have this pre show this recap show that goes over everything that happened in tna over the past week this is your host ringsider anthony i will be taking you through the journey each and every week of tna impact as we discover what is going on what new stars are coming in what storylines are happening this is the review show to be watching so strap in strap on this is going to be a wild ride <laughs> Hello again, guys. Welcome to the Wrestling for Life Network and welcome to the first ever episode of the TNA Review. We have a lot to talk about. We had TNA Impact this past Thursday. We had Under Siege Friday night. And this is going to be a special episode. The first episode is going to be a special episode because we get to cover TNA Impact and Under Siege. I don't know how much we're going to dive deep into um, TNA Impact because of Under Siege last night. But we had great shows both nights. Thursday was excellent. We had a lot happen. We had Jordan Grace defending the title on TNA Impact. We had stuff with the system. And then Under Siege happened, and we had a great showing there. We had some great matches. We had a great crowd turnout. It was a wild ride last night on Under Siege, and we're going to unpack all of it today on this TNA review. And as we continue on this journey, let's go ahead and start talking about what happened this past week on TNA Impact. A lot happened. We had, as I mentioned earlier, Jordan Grace defending the title against Miyu Yamashita in a hard hitting match. This was the main event of TNA Impact. And man, Jordan Grace showed her skills. Mia showed her skills. I mean, it was intense and in this match jordan grace was able to show off her athletic athletic ability jordan grace was able to show off everything she offers to tna wrestling but miyu she was not letting up just as hard hitting jordan grace was miyu was the same thing she had a response for everything jordan grace did and this turned out to be one of the best knockouts matches i have seen in the past couple of months props to jordan grace props to uh miyu it was it was super exciting to see obviously jordan grace retained the tna knockouts world title but y'all if you haven't seen this match you need to go back and watch it because you won't be disappointed we also had Trey Miguel versus Ace Austin to determine the number one contender to the X Division Championship at Under Siege. This was great. We had two former X Division champions in this match. Trey Miguel, probably one of the best X Division champions in this Impact TNA era. And then we had Ace Austin, who is great in a tag team and great as a singles competitor as well. Highly contested match between these two. I was entertained throughout the entirety of this match. Both of these men always deliver when they're in, in the ring, regardless if they're facing each other or facing other opponents they are always great in that tna ring and i love to see it and them together um at thursday's impact oh my god that match was so insane we had a great turnout and a great winner in austin um in ace austin he was the one to re, um to become the number one contender to the tna x division championship at under siege um i think that was a great opponent because we got to see as we will discuss later mustafa ali defending the title against ace austin so i think this was great for ace austin to be the number one contender really highly contested match at um at tna at the tna tapings and under siege and we'll get into both of those matches a little bit later so i'm sure you heard of this particular wrestler over the past couple of weeks joe hendry joe hendry's song is at the top of the charts in the uk 
on the iTunes charts, I believe. Joe Hendry has made a big name for himself in the professional wrestling world. In TNA, I feel like Joe Hendry um, is bringing TNA to the mainstream just with his theme song and his singing ability. And this week on TNA Impact, guess what Joe Hendry had? He had another song for the TNA faithfuls. And um, this was supposed to be an apology song to AJ Francis and Rich Juan, but it turned out to not be an apology song because he sang of how he wanted Joe, not Joe Hendry, but how he wanted AJ Francis to be fired again because it has happened twice before you have to check out this song i'm sure it's on youtube i've even posted it on tiktok so you can go to my tiktok page at ringside anthony and search for the video of joe hendry dissing aj francis once again with you should be fired again. I love Joe Hendry. I think Joe Hendry is perfect for TNA. I hope in the near future, Joe Hendry is put in that main event scene to be a contender for the TNA World Championship. I hope this happens fairly soon. Joe Hendry top tier, bringing TNA back to where, back to mainstream. He's doing this, I feel like, alone, but he has the TNA roster behind him. Joe Hendry top tier talent in TNA, all around great entertainer. The man can sing, the man can play the guitar, the man can wrestle. This man is where it is in TNA wrestling. If you haven't checked out any of Joe Hendry's past songs that he has did in, in TNA, hop over to the TNA YouTube page, give it a little search, find out his songs, listen to them because they will have you laughing and singing along by the end of it. And before we move on to Under Siege, there's one other thing I want to talk about, and that's the match between Cody Diener and Hammerstone on TNA Impact this past week. It was a no DQ match and it was excellent. It was a solid no DQ match. Hammerstone showing his strength as always. Cody Diener showing that he can stand up to the Goliath and fight for his life. It was an excellent showing by both men. And I want to touch on Alex Hammerstone real quick. I believe he is one of the best signings they have had in the past couple of months. Yes, Sam Sammy Callahan returned and I love that as well, but Alex Hammerstone is bringing a dynamic to the TNA roster that I really like, and I hope to see him continue to grow and eventually be in that main event scene for the TNA World Championship. He had a great feud with Josh Alexander, three insane matches with Josh Alexander. This man is the future of TNA wrestling, and I can't wait to see what he does more as we continue to go through 2024 in TNA Impact. We had Under Siege air live Friday night, last Friday night from Albany, New York. We had a stellar card, and I'm going to quickly run down at least the main card. I'm going to quickly run down the match card. So we had Mustafa Ali versus Ace Austin for the, the TNA X Division Championship. We had the TNA Knockouts World Tag Team Championships on the line. Spitfire defending against Alicia Edwards and Masha Slamovich. Then we had a mixed tag team match with Jordan Grace and PCO teaming up to take on Steph D. Lander and Khan. We also were supposed to have Jake something versus Hammerstone, but we'll get into that a little bit later. We had Broken Matt Hardy, Mike Bailey, and Trent Seven versus The System, Josh Alexander, and Eric Young versus Steve Macklin and Frankie Kazarian. We had Jonathan Gresham versus Kushida. Jonathan Gresham's return to TNA Wrestling after a, a absence for a couple of months there. And then we had Ash by Elegance versus Habit. So as we talk about Under Siege, I'm not going to get into all of the matches that went down. I just want to give an overall um, review of what happened and, and what went down and just a quick rating that I thought under siege was probably a eight uh eight out of ten show it was really solid throughout we had some great matches we had a great turnout from the crowd we had great crowd reactions we had a lot of tna chance it was a great night for tna wrestling under siege really hit on all cylinder so i am going to pluck just a few matches from the card to talk about the first one i want to talk about is ash by elegance versus havoc this 
was hilarious. Not the match itself, but the starting of the match and the entrances with Ash by Elegance coming coming out with uh, garlic around her neck, basically trying to flee away the demons of Havoc and Rosemary. It was it was exciting. One of the commentators even said, I believe um, the power of Ash compels you hilarious but this match was very quick i think it was around five to six minutes but ash by elegance did pull out the victory but it was what happened after the match that was really interesting ash by elegance really took out havoc and that was kind of surprising it was ash by elegance is somewhat playing a heel face type of character i don't know it's kind of like a in between with ash by elegance but last night she really showed her heel side by attacking havoc um she wreaked havoc over havoc um last night at under siege it was it was a sight to see to see ash by elegance take out um havoc but i'm excited to see what ash by elegance continues to do in tna as she pushes towards the main event scene of the knockouts and that um in that tna knockouts world title because she's coming from jordan grace i'm sure she is coming for jordan grace and that title she has been at every ringside at every title match that jordan grace has had she is ready for jordan grace and i know she's coming i don't know when it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be at Slammiversary, but Ash by Elegance is definitely ready to hit that main event scene against Jordan Grace. Jonathan Gresham returned to TNA uh, last night at Under Siege. Um, over the past couple of weeks, we had these vignettes coming up of jo Jonathan Gresham. I don't know if he's trying to battle the demons that was inside of him, but that's basically what was presented to us over the past couple of weeks. And he showed up at Under Siege with a new this man faced Kushida, and I don't know what what his gimmick was. I mean, like it's like a dark, dark uh, Jonathan Gresham. It's like a dark octopus because he calls himself the octopus. So it was like a dark octopus. He came out with this black mask on. He wrestled throughout the entirety of the match with this black mask on. It was so intense, and he was coughing throughout the entirety of the match. And when he was coughing, black, like black goo was coming out, and that was how he won the match. At the at the last minute, he some black goo came out and he stuffed it into Kashida's face and pinned him one, two, three, Jonathan Gresham with the victory. It was it was so crazy to see Jonathan Gresham like this. I don't know how I feel yet. I feel like I'm going to like it. And it's not like I don't hate it right now. I think I like it. But it was so weird to see Jonathan Gresham in this light. I can't really, I can't wait to see what happens with this new Jonathan Gresham dark octopus type character. Because after the match, Kushida was still kind of dazed. And then he started coughing. Whatever was happening with this, with this goo, he started coughing after. It was intense. I can't wait to see what TNA does with Jonathan Gresham moving. TNA pulled the trigger last night with Alicia Edwards. So we had the knockouts tag team title match. We had Spitfire, Danny Luna, and Jody Threat versus Masha Slamovich and Alicia Edwards. Killer Ke Kelly is taking some what of a leave right now from TNA Wrestling, but Masha needed a replacement. Alicia Edwards stepped up to be her, her tag team partner. And last night at Under Siege, they did it. They did it. Alicia Edwards and Masha Slamovich beat Spitfire to become the new TNA Knockouts World Tag Team Champions. Alicia Edwards is finally holding gold in TNA Wrestling. This was a pretty solid match between both teams. I enjoyed it. I was more happy about the outcome than I was the match because I was pulling for Alicia Edwards and Masha Slamovich. I don't know how I feel right now about Alicia Edwards teaming with Masha Slamovich, but it worked out last night when they became the new TNA Knockouts World Tag Team Champions. Right now, the system is at the top of their game because every, and I mean every, every member of the system 
is holding gold right now in TNA. We got Moose as the TNA world champion. We got Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards as the TNA tag team champions. And now we got Alicia Edwards. And Masha Slamovich is not really a part of the system yet, but she might be now. We got Alicia Edwards, one half of the TNA Knockouts World Tag Team Champions. The system is strong. The system is strong in TNA. They are like, I don't know, Goliath. I don't know what you would call it, but the system is super strong in TNA wrestling right now. And I don't want to see their, their momentum be shot. They have to keep going with this strong system. I'm excited for the system. I'm excited for Alicia Edwards and Masha Slamovich. Alicia Edwards again, and that's how I'm going to end this, this portion of the show. Alicia Edwards is finally holding gold in TNA wrestling. So I quickly want to talk about three more matches from Under Siege. So the first match will be Jordan Grace and PCO versus Khan and Steph D. Lander. And man, this match was just fun. This match was fun all around. I love to see Steph D. Lander in there. I love to see Khan in there. Uh, PCO and Jordan Grace. Just a fun match all together. Jordan Grace, though. We got to talk about Jordan Grace for a quick second before we move on to the other two matches. But Jordan Grace picked up Khan, y'all. Jordan Grace picked up Khan and did a huge, like, rolling, rolling move, slam move with him. I don't know what it's called. I heard people say, it was the rolling dvd I, I i don't i'm not really big on knowing the names of the moves but when i'm seeing those moves um being performed i'm just in awe but jordan grace picked up con y'all slammed him down it was intense y'all and then jordan grace picked up the victory for her team with uh pinning steph d lander with the uh, grace driver it was it was a fun match not much to talk about it was just a fun match PCO showed out, uh, Khan showed out, Steph D. Lander showed out. All parties involved were were just showing their their top skills in TNA. Really awesome match. And again, Jordan Grace picked up the victory for her team with PCO. So we are down to the last two matches of Under Siege. And uh, the first match I want to talk about is Ace Austin versus Mustafa Ali for the X Division Championship. I knew this match was going to be great. So early I said we were going to talk about both matches with Trey Miguel and um, Ace Austin to determine the number one contender for the X Division Championship. That was a solid match between those two. I, I, I delved deep into that match earlier, but I just want to say that I'm glad Ace Austin won because we had an awesome showing by Ace Austin, Mustafa Ali, another fun match. It, it was pretty long too. They gave these two men time. I enjoyed it. Obviously, Mustafa Ali retained the X Division Championship. Great showing by both of them. I, I love Ace Austin as a singles competitor. He's great as a tag team, too, with Chris Bay. But as a singles competitor as well, that man shows his ability to, to run around that ring, know, know the, the ring. That man is just great. I love seeing Ace Austin as a singles competitor in TNA wrestling. I don't know who's going to take that title away from Mustafa Ali. Will it be Jake something in the future? I'm not sure, but all in all, it was a great match. I'm glad these two got a chance to share the ring together. I, I definitely enjoyed this match. And lastly, I want to talk about the main event. We had the system versus Speedball Mountain and Broken Matt Hardy. And I'm going to say there was a lot of mess talked about this, uh, about this match on social media the past week. A lot of people were saying we, uh, free speed bomb Mike Bailey. Uh, why is Matt Hardy in this match? There was a lot of nonsense and just bad mouthing this match over the past week. And guess what the TNA roster did? These six men showed up and showed out and proved all the doubters wrong matt hardy still has it matt hardy was the best i have seen and uh with matt hardy and in some in some months maybe even a couple of years matt hardy showed up and showed out and still told all the fans that i can still go in a wrestling ring and i appreciated that um mike bailey trent seven awesome together as a tag team teaming up with uh matt hardy was great this match was insane it really was it went a very long time it was it was a bit over 20 minutes but they utilized that entire 
20 minutes in the system. Again, I said it earlier, the system is completely strong. Alicia Edwards got her little um got her little um movement in this match by um pulling one of the members of Speedball Mountain outside of the ring when the match was still going on and they had the pinfall. Uh Alicia Edwards, she she got her sneaky hands in there some way, but the system looked very strong throughout the entirety of the night and in this match i'm 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 happy for the system i'm happy for moose i'm happy for brian myers and eddie edwards because they are showing a tna and the tna fans that we are here no one's gonna take our spot we are here to we had a lot of high spots in this match we had a sick cutter by matt hardy when um uh, moose jumped off the top rope we had high spots we had high entertainment we had high wrestling moves we had this is awesome chance we had tna chance this was the match of the night for me all of the matches on the card were good i think a lot of the matches had match of the night potential but this did it the main event of a lot of tna shows always is literally the main event and they go out and show the world why tna is still here after 20 years excellent main event and the winner and the winner of this main event was none other than the system because what they are super strong tna has built the system up to be this top tier heel stable and i love it the system won this match and they charge on to the next monthly special against all arts and then we have slammiversary coming up in july a lot happened but the system remains the top stable the top team the top heel stable in tna wrestling all right y'all we have come to the end of the first episode of the tna review on the wrestling for life network we talked about this past week's episode of tna impact we talked about under siege which in the very first episode of the review we got to cover a monthly special in under siege TNA is on a roll right now. Everything TNA is doing, they are hitting on all cylinders. Even with the loss of Scott Demore earlier this year, I think TNA is still thriving. TNA is still growing. We had Rebellion just a couple of weeks ago, and Rebellion was awesome. We had returns of Sammy Callahan. We had returns of, obviously, Broken Mount Hardy. TNA is hitting on all cylinders right now. And keep watching, keep enjoying, because I, I'm sure as we charge to Slammiversary and then we charge to Bound for Glory in October, TNA has a lot of surprises up their sleeve. Again, this was the first episode of the TNA Impact Review or the TNA Review I'm thankful for this channel and I'm thankful to be a part of this channel and I'm thankful that we get to watch professional wrestling together and that we have TNA all to enjoy as fans. Again, we or myself will be back next week for another in-depth review of TNA as we recover uh, as we covered the fallout from um under siege. We'll be covering the fallout um from under siege. And then hopefully, as we continue to do these reviews, we will have some guests on here to talk about how they enjoy TNA and their thoughts and um, opinions on the current product of a tna so again thank you for watching the first episode of the tna review i will see you in the next one